Yeah, man. That's right. There we go. There we go. Now we live. I hit the, I hit the live button so that we're live. Um, how's how's Costa Rica been? Ben's down in Costa Rica, just just balling, being, being yeah, balling, uh, breaking. It is a beautiful country. Uh, it might be my favorite tropical country I've been to. I've been to like Puerto Rico, Mexico, Dominican. Uh, I went to what was the one over there? Some one that served the B or not Barbados. Not oh Belize went to Belize. Oh, that's um, cool. That was okay, but uh, it's beautiful here. The people are nice. Although there's one guy, one guy. I'm gonna tell you a story. One dude. Give me the uh, story. Five of the so there's seven kids that we're here with. We're three of the couple, two other couples. Five of them are in a Spanish version school. Like our oldest kids are pretty fluent. Like they, they that's all they speak at school. And the oldest kid, he's 12. His name is Will. Hey, wait, no. Um, hey, hey, wait. Hey, stop, stop telling your story. Let me um let me get us on the radio. I gotta get us I want to get us on the radio and then Jai's on good, guys. Jai can play some tunes. What's up, Jai? Um Jai's gotta play some tunes because we gotta make a radio show, and then we'll, you can start with we'll start the radio show with your story. Okay, That's good, Ben. Hi, Angela. I, I get so hey, excited man. talking to people that I forget that we're making a radio show. Jai's in the house. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm hit the live button. Jai, you got some tunes ready? Yep. Beauty, here we go. Oh, I was like, that's the wrong song. <laughs> Angela knows the right song because she's like, I know my, my dance song. I like. Ben, you you kind of blend in with the drapes a little bit. Like the pattern is different. Or you blend in a little bit. Oh yeah, I can't see. It, it looks like you're camouflaging. Yeah. Hey, ben, it looks I like a chameleon. I'm when Batman. You, when you run out of clothes, just tear those babies down and just sew some shit together. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like. Uh, Sound of music. Just make some clothes out of the drapes. Yeah. Just some classic sound of music type of stuff, Ben. I'm going to have to watch the sound of music. I'm sick of people talking about it, but. <laughs> Welcome to uh, uh, Turf Sub Radio. My name is Ben Smith. I'm the host, Dan Plata, Angela Smiles. We're doing some sweet stuff. We got a great show for you today about Ben Smith. He's going to kill it with his laughter and humorous and his fat guy jokes. Here he goes. Okay. Did we? Did, did, hey. Are we done? Yeah, that was a really good intro. I'm, Jai, can you record that? And we're just going to play that at the start of every episode going forward. That's just going to be the new intro track. <laughs> sure. That's funny. Sure. Yeah. I would like royalties. I, I think you introduced yourself as I'm Ben Smith, and this is Turf's Up Radio, and I'm Dan Plata. I'm pretty sure you said you're Ben Smith, and then like three seconds later you said, and I'm Dan Plata, which I, <laughs> there was nothing wrong with that. I really hey, Dan, actually liked Dan? it. I thought that was cool. Uh, it was my intro, and I would like you to stop critiquing it. I'm giving you positive feedback. Yeah, it's a little bit judgy. It was, it was somewhere in between. It was kind of a feedback sandwich. I wanted to, it was like a feedback yeah, yeah, sandwich yeah. without any bread. Yeah. Yeah. And no ice cream. Um, <laughs> are, are, okay. You ready for my story? Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Ben's got a story I, to tell. Here we go. I'm in Costa Rica on a vacation. Uh, I, I have some passion to this whole employee retention happiness thing or whatever. So I, I wanted to get on here. I got about, only 30 minutes because then we got to get on a bus to go to a small village where they're going to try to take all my money for chiclets or whatever they do. I bet they're, uh, they're going to win. I bet they're going to yeah. succeed. Well, they're they're winning. I actually need to find a place that will give me money in order to keep giving them money. So, um, but uh, so we're in Costa Rica. We're here with three families. Uh, my two kids are fluent in Spanish. One of the family's two kids are fluent in Spanish. And another kid's youngest kid is becoming fluent in Spanish. They go to Spanish schools. Yesterday, they, they are towel Nazis in this place. Like, you get towel cards, and they're like, if you don't return your towel, you will be buying towels. It reminds me of, like, do they like charge as much chain. for the towels? Do they charge as much for the towels as they do for you to do the laundry there? Pro probably. And it reminds me of, like, like when you go to rest. It's like one of those things as a business owner that I'm just like, if you're fighting about towels, you should just charge everybody like 10 more dollars a day. And just give us towels or something. Like maybe when we walk in, we get our towel and you're like, this is your one towel. I, I don't know. Like, like it just like, why is this what you're fighting about? But anyway, so 
yesterday, at the end of the day, uh, Willie, who is our friend's oldest son, he's 12, fluent in Spanish, went up to the towel place, and there's a couple towel guys in there, and and uh, and then the lifeguard was there. And he goes and he throws he throw his towels into the bin, and he goes, four towels. And they're like, that wasn't four. Hold on, someone's trying to get my door. Get him. I hope it's my family. <laughs> family? Hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. Ben's out. Um, ben, Ben. besides this story, I know Ben's got another story that has to do with, uh, I don't know if this one has to oh, do with boy. Yeah. What would you say? I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. He's back. Okay. So, so, right, uh, so, so, Willie throws towels in there, says he had four, he said quattro. One, uno, dos, tres, quattro. Yeah, he said quattro. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, and then the guy goes something, but like, oh, he didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't. You had a four. There was a four there. And Willie's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I had four. And Willie's twelve, and he was talking to adults, and he and he was instructed by his dad to go get the towels and not mess it up because like he understands that there's a severity around towels. And and then he like he tried to talk to him, and the guy called him an idiot in Spanish, and and Willie walked away crying. And I happened to walk up. I didn't know any of this was happening. I walk up. And Willie's in the trees, like whining. And I'm like, oh, God. You know, like, what's this dumb kid doing again? So I'm like, why, why, why are you crying, Will? And he won't talk to me. And I'm a little bit drunk. And he's like, said something with the towel guy. I was like, come on, come on with me. He's like, I'm waiting for my dad. I was like, he's over there. Just come with me. And and he won't come. And then and I, I just knew something happened with the towels. And I walk up and I go, I need new towels. And I'm bu- he goes, okay, throw them in there. And I go to throw them in there. And the guy's like, oh, no, you only have three. And I went, and I got super mad i was like there's four here you want to count them he goes that's three so i threw them all on the floor and spread them out i said give me four fucking towels right now and then he gave me four towels and then and then willie's dad came up and and he got his four towels but i didn't know about the idiot thing so we talked to management i am currently still seeking the fat guy in the towel department i will find you or are you talking to him right now you think you think the fat guy in the towel department is watching this right now yeah (laughs) It's a popular show. I'm gonna find him. We're big in Costa. I'm gonna find him. We're big. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I have learned in our uh, in our excursion yesterday, Costa Rica does not have an army. They have a good SWAT team that is fat, is what the Costa Rican guy said. So, I do think I have a fighting chance at not going to Costa Rica prison if it comes to that. Okay. What does their what does their size have to do with their the for the SWAT team? What was he? I, what I was, don't know. What, that's what point the, that's the information that he gave me. I guess you got what you I, got. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's what I got. Uh, they have they have a lot of coffee. Also, also, I'm going to give you one more tip that I didn't know. Their coffee is really good down there. I'll tell you that. Let me ask you this. So there's like, let's say, standard light, medium, dark roast, right? Which one has more caffeine? Usually, light roast does. Did you know that, Angela? I did know that. Yeah. But you can, but it, but it's not, it's not like a hard and fast. It's not hard and fast. No, it's pretty hard and fast because the darker it is, that means they cook it longer, which removes more of the caffeine. I forgot why it is because it's the, I just remember that it's the reverse of what. But when you buy it, when you buy it in a store, like they can, they can add or subtract caffeine out of damn near anything now. So yeah. yeah. Cause I've yeah. definitely, I've definitely bought stuff that I thought was higher caffeine and it wasn't. And I've bought stuff that I thought was less caffeine. Yeah. I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, other than the towel guy, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, I like the country. It, it's, it's very nice. I'm, I'm excited. We probably come back as long as the it, towel guy gets destroyed. I've been to Costa Rica once. That was where Marty and I went for our honeymoon. Um, Ooh. we went I, uh, last year for my birthday. Oh yeah. It. Oh yeah, it is. It's so beautiful there. My favorite, um, my favorite memory was we went. Um, we had we rented a boat for an entire day to go up. This is not at all what we were supposed to talk about today, but we're just gonna tell some Costa Rica stories while we're here. Uh, we rented a like a charter boat for an entire day, just Marty and I, um, and it was too wavy to go out like sailfish fishing. And it was like ten foot waves, even in shallow, and so we basically sure. just had the boat all day with the captain. He was like, should I bring a first mate? And I was like, no, man, like, why do we need a first mate? I like to fish. Just tell me what to do. Like fishing is fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and we, we, he wasn't rigged. He was rigged up to go out. He wasn't really rigged up for like, we were going for rooster fish and snapper and stuff, but he didn't have 
in hindsight, like his gear was not at all rigged up for that. But we basically just like got a sweet boat ride, drank drank all of his beer, hung out, and and he was super fun to hang out with. Um, but we didn't really we caught like one fish the whole day. And so I had said to Marty, I was like, if we get another chance to go out fishing, I'm obsessed with fishing. We gotta like see if we can work it in to the rest of our itinerary for the week. Um and we happened to be, we were staying at an all-inclusive resort, but we were like close to a little town. So we like walked off the resort, walked into this town and there was a little restaurant there and like, here come the two Americans. Right. And so like, they know the people in town just are just like, Hey, American guy, uh, you probably have money and you want to come and spend it over here. And it was the dude that like spoke fluent English. It was just like, Oh, this is kind of weird. Like I thought he would be like saying a thing in Spanish that I didn't understand, but he spoke perfect English and behind him on the wall like it's a open air style restaurant behind him on the wall is tons of fish and like spear guns hanging everywhere and so he and i are bsing and i'm like you're in this picture man like he is on the picture on the wall and he's like yeah like that's my spear gun on the wall right above and he grabs the spear gun and like takes it down it's like half direction but he's like this is a fucking spear gun that's in that picture and like yeah we we go out and we spear fish and i was like no shit you can just go shoot fish and he's like yeah, yeah man like this is what we do um and he's like you see that yellow boat down there and you can like see down to the ocean and he's like that's my brother's boat like we i when i'm not re- this is my restaurant that's his boat like this is the fi- that's the fish that <laughs> we're eating here um yeah and like, no shit and he's like yeah you you want to go and i was like Ugh! like that's the thing we can just go and he's like yeah i mean like not for free. Like you have to pay him to go. Um, but do you want me to give him a call and see like, if he has, you know, charter openings this week? And I was just like, Marty, like, can we give him a, and like my face is already lighting up. And so, so we got a, like a morning booked with him. We got a half a day booked with him, and we went out and we, he was like way more rigged up for the type of fishing that we were doing in there. And we, so we were chasing some, um some mahi mahi and some other stuff and just like legit couldn't get anything to bite and he had said like yeah the water clarity is a little murky and this is just kind of a weird time of year and we the weather was like variable and the winds were switching which like in fishing that just always sucks for fishing and so he's like all right we're jumping in and i knew like part of the plan was to go spear fishing and that we were like prepared for that i totally forgot a swimsuit and i'm just like fuck it that I'm just underwear i'm going in like i'm not not going spear fishing but yeah, so yeah. flippers and underwear and i went in and um he shot a like he was just kind of giving me the lay of the land um and i don't i swim like a fish like i grew up with a pool grew up in lakes i swim really well but i do not like free dive well at all i cannot like 10 feet and i get like claustrophobic i can scuba a little bit but i can't snorkel and like free dive um but we ended up, he, he shot a little grouper right away. I shot some trigger fish and a parrot fish. And then they made like fresh sushimi on the boat. And so we're out there. There's a catamaran going by with like a huge catamaran with a hundred plus people on it. And I'm standing on the deck in my freaking underwear eating sushimi. And I just remember like waving at him. And, and I mean, like I might as well have been European, right? It, it, my underwear is more than a speedo, right? It's yeah. like box of briefs. So it's like, I'm still like covered up more than a weird European dude would be. Um, but I, I'll just never forget that. Like take number two on fishing and went and got it, it. It Ben, I don't know. Have you speared fish before spear fished? I have not. I've one of the times that I was on some sort of excursion, the guy went and got some fish with a spear gun. Um, but I, he didn't really tell anybody he was doing it. All of a sudden he came back with a spear gun and fish in his hand. And I was like, what? so oh. the, the, the quickest way I can describe it is it is bow hunting underwater. It's the yeah, I can imagine. It's the coolest. I thing. can imagine. It'd be amazing. Like you're, you're stalking fish. You have about a ten to twelve foot range, and you're you're like it's it's bow hunting with a recurve. Like you don't. Yeah. There's no like aiming mechanism. It's just point and aim. Yeah. And shoot. But you got to be really stealthy, and it's just freaking cool. Okay. It's it's super sweet. So yeah, anyway. no, I think it'd be super fun. We're going fishing tomorrow. I'm gonna guess it's not spear fishing, which now I'm disappointed. So. Thanks. Be ready to jump in in your underwear. I'm, I'm going to be ready, dude. Call them ahead of time. The Mar- Marty and I took a vacay down to Mazatlan in Mexico a, a handful of years ago. And uh, on that one, we like got a hold of the, we, we booked a fishing trip while we were down there. 
And then I called him ahead of time. And I was like, Hey, any chance like spear fishing is a thing. And he's like, yeah, I mean, we don't really offer it or anything, but this is something you want to do. And I was like, can I? And so he totally hooked us up. He had all the stuff and, and the, the water clarity was really shitty in the first place. He's like, yeah, you just got to dive down there. And it's like 20 or 30 feet down. I got 10 feet down. And I was like, let's get a different spot. I just like, I got down there and it was like dark and gross and murky. He's like, yeah, once you get through that, it's fine. I'm just like, man, I don't, I, I like 13 feet down and, and I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. I'm already panicking. Yeah. I'm already panicking. I'm already out of breath. Um, yeah. I don't do this every day. It, it, I do think that's like a skill set I'm envious of. And I'm sure like any of us could learn how to do it. Like being underwater. That's what we were doing. But man, I, it's, you can't just jump in the water and be like, I'm going to stay down here for a minute and go yeah. way down there. It's like, no, I'll be down here for 30 seconds. And then I'm a panic. Um, okay. Probably gulp, gulp a big breath of water and die. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Say hi, Dan. Say it loud. Say, hey, oh, what's going on? That's smiles. That's what we call smiles. If you call her, really <laughs> all right. See you later. Peace. Just like that, she gone. She had mm-hmm. enough of us. Um, but what we're here to talk about today is employee, employee engagement. engagement, employee engagement and retention. Um, I wanna, I wanna frame it up a little bit for a second because I think it kind of happens in doses. And I think one area that we get wrong as business owners is we don't do it before we even hire the person or mm. start building our team. Like it's an intentional thing I think we need to be doing even as part of our recruiting process. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I really want to first start with core values because I, I think if you don't, we talk a lot about culture and if you don't have a distinct culture and know how to define it and and what it looks like and what it feels like and how you d- express it to other people. It's really hard to know how to engage your employees because you don't even really know why you're hiring them and why you're firing them. Um, so so think- hold on right there. Like, I think that sometimes yeah. things get hard because people say things like a distinct culture. And when I've heard those things, you have to have your unique culture. And like, they put all this stress on like making it seem like, Even like with marketing, it's like your unique marketing strategy. And when we're in this country where we have billions of businesses, it's like it's overwhelming to think of how you can make that special on your own. And I think that sometimes people often try to make it like a like a special culture. Like they're trying to be so unique that they're not even themselves. So like I prefer to use the words like and 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 I think that this is what most people mean is like to make it your culture. But when you say distinct culture, I feel like people think that they're supposed to find some sort of special sauce like a tangible sauce has to be what yeah you know it has to be you and so like rather than distinct i think it's like you just have to have your 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 own culture just try not to you know because like with all of us like grouping together and talking and information passing it's like oh man dan's doing this thing in his business i want to do that and it's like you can take that and do that but like you got to make sure you have like the the passion behind it, right? You know what I mean? It has to matter to you to make it matter for other people, you know? Yeah, I think that's a good point. And, and maybe it's not that it has to be like the su- super unique or distinct, but I think it has to be defined. Um, yeah. Because yeah. so often it's just like off the cuff. And so if you, if you don't have it as like a guideline for yourself, then it becomes hard to know why to hire or fire somebody in the first place. And so even before you have employees, like how you decide who should be an employee you need some guidelines and, and that's where I go back to the core values. Um, and I'm, I, I had, uh, love hate probably isn't the right word for this, but, but I core values, just the nomenclature of it just feels so corporate to me. And it's like, it just, that just feels kind of icky to me and boring. Um, but I have some found some really unique ways and fun ways to make core values a lot of fun in our business. Um, and so I think as long as you can make it your own and make it fun, then it doesn't have to feel corporate and boring and like something you need to talk to your employees about is if you're scolding them. Cause that always feels like what it feels like um, when I had exposure to it in the corporate world. Um, so here's, here's a couple like core value tips. If you don't have a set of core values that you use to decide who's in and who's out, who gets to come on the ride with you. Um, first thing I'd say is like, if it's your business, it's your core values. Cause they're working for you. And they got to jive with you and what you're all about. And that business is a reflection of you. And so the core values are a reflection of you. 
And so it's got, it can't just be like things you want to be. You already have them. The core values already exist. They're just your core values. So you don't need to like make a bunch of shit up. You already have, like you said, Ben, it's like, it's not a bunch of like these big, unique differentiators. You already have them. It's just trying to find the right words for them that are, that people can remember and are. And, and, And as a person with ADHD, it's so hard to reflect on myself. I think a lot of business owners end up with ADHD and, and so like, or they have it. Um, it's not like, oh, yeah, I, was say, I, was say, I don't think, oh shit, I'm a business owner, man. That's I'm feeling different. Like I got this. Yeah. this um, thing. but like, it's super hard for me to reflect upon myself and like take a second and be like, oh, why do I do the things I do? It's like, it's so hard. And so it's been something I've been focusing on and it's been interesting, you know, like, like I ultimately want to make people happy. You know what I mean? And and that that goes across everything, you know, and it is, it is selfish. I do it for me, not for them. Like, it's what I want to do, you know, yeah. and it just works out good for those other people, you know. Um, and so you just got to let it. You just got to start trying. I mean, Dan's Dan's helped me make my core values at times. Uh, I've had multiple different employees help me, multiple different team members. We have now locked it down on three that we're pretty happy with. Due to my recent employee engagement, there's a chance that we might need another one to be to have like more of an overarching, like be positive thing. Um, but uh not totally sure. <laughs> so it is our smiles. It Maybe is. smiling can be part of your core values. Yeah, you need an S word. You can you can teach that. We'll just put your picture instead of any words, it'll just be you. <laughs> Bam. Bam. <clears throat> but no, I it is hard, it. man. It, it it's tricky and, and you and it's fine if you don't get it right the first time because you can mm-hmm. you, can, like, you can do it again. 80 20. Yeah. And I um, think that is, you pointed out, when you see there's gaps and things missed and you made the wrong decisions and hires and th- it often points to like, oops. yeah, oh, I'm missing a core value or you're I'm, missing. Uh, and, yeah. and every time that we've lost somebody, like in a weird way or an unexpected way, like, like it's usually like you look at it and you're like, yeah. Yeah, that was our fault. Like we, he shouldn't have been here. Like the whole, like we, we do EOS, which now we've dubbed MOS because we're not good at EOS. So it's Marvel operating system. Um, and uh, make it our own. Make it our own. It's like we miss an L10 and everybody's like, you can't do that in the US. And we're like, well, you can in MOS. You can miss the shit out of those. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, so, you know, every time, like we, like the last guy we lost, I got a kid crying because he's sunburned, you know, tough life. Oh, no, um, did Charlie, Charlie got sunburned? Yeah, dude. We've been like, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. so is Lucy. Whatever. Pasty white kids. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, we, the guy that we just lost, we were trying to force him. Like, we kind of made positions in the company for him because he did one thing really well. And we, we wanted to help him and have him be part of the team. And, and, uh, and EOS and MOS both say, don't make a position for somebody, you know? And so it's, it's totally every time it's like, yep, this is why these are the rules. This is why these things are said, you know? Yeah. So it's tough. I, uh, when, whenever I've, um, I've, I've recreated two sets of core values and the, and there's a process that I found that worked really well for me in both of them to, to Danify them which was having an acronym. I like having yeah. an acronym because then the acronym is almost like a core value in and of itself too. Um, mm-hmm. So when I was at Blue Skies, we had the word plow because we were plow horses and not show horses. And that was like our team embraced mm. that. Like we did the hard stuff that nobody else wanted to do. Um, uh, at Best Damn Bookkeeping, it's best. Like everything that I'm building in this business, like I'm going to build the best damn bookkeeping business. So the acronym is best. Like. I want that to be heart and center of everything we're working on. Um, But then it gives me the letters that I'm going to use for the core values. And that's fine because like, so, so at at blue skies, the P and plow stood for positive attitude that like, that is going to be a core value of mine. And until the end of time, because for what you said, Ben, it's like when you have an employee that has a shitty attitude, it's like, the erosion of everything within the company because of their shittiness is just the worst. Um, yeah. And so I don't have a P in my new acronym, but I have the letter B and the word blessed fits with that. 
And so instead of positive attitude, the word is blessed. And it's about being thankful and being positive. And so we can, it's a different word, but it means the same thing, right? And it gets to the same, the same point. Um, and that's just something that's really important to me. I have efficiency because we need to be productive. I have steadfast because I want people that are problem solving and have a bunch of grit. And then I have trustworthy because duh, that's like, literally that's what it says. Trustworthy. Like every other one has an explanation. Trustworthy is just duh, like duh. Um, but I find an acronym works so well because a, I can remember it. Uh, and that's way easier to talk about it. B employees can remember it. Cause if you really go to your employees and say like, Hey guys, what are our core values? How many of them can actually tell you what your core values are, right? It's if, if all it is, is just some words on the wall, they usually can't. I thought you were yeah. about to, I thought you were about to smell your armpit there, Ben, and be just like, how, how am I doing here? How am I doing here? Mm-hmm. Um, but so, so I found, I found that to be important. Um, we got to hit a commercial break here. So, so Jai play us out with, with some tunes. I want to come back and just talk about some of the ways to incorporate those core values. Cause like I said earlier, it, it, there's always a borderline risk that they get, um, Jai, you might have your, uh, you might have your mute on. Um, there's, there's, there we go. There we go. There's a borderline risk that your core values just sound corporate and boring. And then you're just like, please, here's our core values. Please sign off that you read them. Right. That's yeah. super. Lame. Um, so we're going to talk about some cool ways to make your core, core values interesting and fun for your team. So it's not corporate. And then we're going to talk about how to, uh, engage employees with it and other cool shit that you can do. And I know Ben's got another story before he's got to jump off here. So we got to get to that. We'll be back with, uh, oh, the camera's over here today. We'll be back with some more uh, home service happy hour right here on Turf Sub Radio. Don't go nowhere. Creating art from darkness. For over 20 years, Cast Lighting has designed and manufactured the world's most durable, energy efficient, and technically advanced landscape lighting products available at astonishingly affordable prices. Cast offers an all encompassing line of products with everything you need to get the job done. Cast Landscape, their most durable product, is best in class low voltage landscape lighting made of solid bronze with integrated and drop in LED technology. These fixtures are built to endure the most demanding environments. Source Lighting, a new division by Cast, is your source for professional grand landscape lighting made of durable brass, offering both integrated and drop-in LED technology and backed by CAST, the world's most durable outdoor lighting. CAST Lighting gives you innovative, state-of-the-art, old-world craftsmanship with tomorrow's technology. Visit their website at cast-lighting.com today. That's cast-lighting.com. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world, no one rocks like Turfs Up Radio. Turf Up Radio, your industry, your station. Press is North America's only lineup of battery-powered OPE that meets the needs of professional landscapers. Right now with Cress, you can save up to $2,000 per crew per year, supported by the revolutionary 8-Minute Cyber System. Cress equipment provides the same power and performance as their gas-powered counterparts, and Cress-made 60-volt CyberPak batteries charge in 8 minutes or less. Professional landscapers can finally make the switch to battery without sacrificing performance, power, or runtime. For more information or to find a dealer near you, visit Cress.com. Typical savings for a full-time landscaping crew of three users operating handheld power tools for 180 days per year. Having issues with your maintenance schedule? Want better routing and ability to track your vehicles when they leave the shop? Do you want to reduce your liability exposure with your vehicles that are moving billboards on the road? GPS Fleet Consulting uses cloud-based dash cam monitoring and can easily track your vehicle maintenance using real odometer readings. GPS Fleet Consulting can also assist you with live phone support and email support with guaranteed same-day responses. Yes, same-day responses. Stop wondering where your trucks are and start managing your fleet with GPS fleet management systems for more information visit gpsfleetconsulting.com that's gpsfleetconsulting.com yeah baby
back with some more home service happy hour right here on Turf Sub Radio. I'm uh I'm up in Scotty. I got the got the wall of Great Lakes fish behind me here. Normally when I'm up here, I got the bear rug behind me, but my mom moved her puzzle table, and her puzzle table is what I use as my desk when I'm here. So we got the fish behind me today. We got Angela Schroeder. We got Ben Smith. Sorry, Ben, I totally took your. I took, you did such a good job with the first intro. I should have let you re-intro us now that we're back from the commercial break. But it's nice to see that I did better. To, to I just know. jumped into it. Yeah, not bad. Do you have um, stuff, gel things? We got a few people checking in. What's up, uh, Sterling Wash? Checking in says I have. For a second, I read that I was like, I have no values. Just like Stone Cold, um, but he's working on it. He's working on his core values. Um, Carolyn from back in my Cargill days, checking in says, "Good info. Nice seeing you." She loves the core values. Thanks for checking in, Carolyn. Good to hear from you. Um, Ben Ben Smith said he's going to be down in in your area in October for a mastermind. Um, Trying to talk to Gino. Back off. No, yeah, you did a bad job of talking to Gino. Uh, could I, I, I didn't even know you were talking to Gino. Yeah, I was like, who um, said that? Is somebody t- yeah. acting like Dan lives in Florida? Angela, Angela, and I'll consult you on your Disney uh, escapades. We are professionals now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Angela was. No, I'm gonna trust Gino. Gino. Gino has like 19 trips on Facebook, from what I can tell, to Disney. Yeah, dude, that that dude lives at Disney. He should be embarrassed. He, is. he should be embarrassed. He should be proud. He should be proud. Um, I want to. I want to get to um some some cool things you can do with your core values so that they don't seem boring and lame. Um, but uh, Ben, I know you got to run at some point. Do you want to? Do you want to go us, like pretty quick here? Do you want to give us a little story about um company events real quick? Any, any lessons yeah. learned on company events? Yeah, got a couple, right? You know, so like Dan knows me very well. We're very, really close friends. Um, one of my, uh, what's it called in your VTO? Like your big hairy goal things. Like my, uh, one of my goals, one of my big goals for my company has been to do a company trip. We have anywhere between 14 to 16 employees typically now, um, including my wife, me and my wife. and. And, uh, I've, you know, I've always imagined different types of trips and different types of things and like, what could it be and what will it be? And, and then, uh, Cody, my apps manager was like, maybe we just go to Wisconsin Dells, which is a water park area. That's about, what is it? Like four or five hours from us, Dan. Yeah. Um, I think it was like four. I think it was a four bay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I was like, all right. So I'm a get an idea, run with it, make it happen type of person. So I, uh, I went for it and I reached out to Kalahari, which is a water park and said, Hey, I want to do this. Like, let me get some room blocks. It's like an indoor resort water park. Yep. Yep. If you're and not so, Wisconsin Dells for those. Not yep. Familiar. And so we did it in February. I took every employee. Uh, I took their families, like their spouse and, and kids. Uh, I took with like about four or five other families of people that have uh, basically given them the, like given their work and, and time to, to my company for free, which was included Dan, because he's helped us with bookkeeping. So if you are willing to put up with this shitty friendship, you can get free bookkeeping. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's not worth it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, but so and even even Dan's wife's helped us with some marketing stuff. And, you know, so we had all these families. I paid for everybody's room for two nights. Uh, I gave everybody a $100 gas card to get down there. And I gave every kid that came in a $50 arcade card to the, to the arcade. Uh, and my goal, my thing that I said at the beginning was my only expectation is that you come and have fun. And at five o'clock on Saturday, swing by our cabana. Cause I rented a couple cabanas. One of them being a hot tub cabana and have some pizza and just say, hi, you know, I didn't want to make it a weird thing or a, like a stressful thing. It was just, I just wanted to give back. And it went it went really well, except for one thing. Uh, one of my guys I'm trying to decide if I can talk about this stuff. Yeah, I can talk about this stuff. Yeah, um, one of my guys uh, got pretty drunk at, on Saturday night and tried to get in a fight with some people in the swim up bar at the water park, and and like. Got inappropriate with like a woman. I, I just all this weird stuff happened, and and then and then well that guy was getting drugged out by security, and one of my other employees 
another one of my employees went on a had a conversation with three of the wife girlfriends of the group uh, about women and not having the right to vote and that they should worship the men that are in their lives because it makes them who they like this whole thing, right? This whole like bad women thing. And it, and, and it was just, it was really hard. I didn't hear about it until Sunday morning. Didn't know what to do. Uh, I immediately had regrets like, oh my gosh, I paid all this money to have all these people come down here. And now these people are fighting and it just felt like it all backfired and felt shitty. Um, and in my head, I was like, I'm never going to do this again. Uh, I don't know why I ever would. Like, I never want to give back to people. I can fix that. I'm, um, uh, I don't know why I would do this. Yada, yada, yada. And it, it was really hard at the time. Um, here, I got a part. Uh, and... And so then we ended up losing the guy that got drunk and hurt people or uh, got kicked out. He came into work on Monday. Uh, I wanted him to seek help. We have an HR. Our insurance company has an HR firm that we can ask questions to and like get help with this. They they recommended letting him go immediately because now he has a like a documented history of violence. And if we we brought him into a house and he did something like we'd be liable because we knew about the problem already and all this stuff. So that sucked, felt really heavy and sad and, and shitty. Cause it's like the worst, like it's not what I wanted. Um, the other guy were so, so then that guy on Monday ended up just not coming back. He didn't come back after Monday and, and, uh, and I hope the best for him. And, and he was one of the ones that we were trying to shoehorn into a place in our business. And, and, uh, and we didn't, we didn't we didn't really have a good spot for him. He has good skills, but we just weren't utilizing them and he should have been somewhere else. Um, so then the other guy, we're still trying to figure him out. Uh, we probably mishandled it. We probably should have been. Um, I don't know what we should have done. It's it's so hard because we're just out here trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Uh, we've we've tried to seek some like classes and the classes that we're looking at get down like the HR places. First, they tried to make it so the class was for everybody at work on like how to treat people better at work. And it was like, no, we don't need that. Like, we're not going to make everybody take this class because not everybody did this. And and then and then and then we found um, one class that might have worked, but we would have had to buy 20 seats anyways. Um, and and like Trevor, my general manager was like kind of taking some of the previews of the class and and had stuff like a microaggression is calling your meetings like your your morning meeting. We call them stand up meetings. Apparently that's a microaggression. And then I showed a picture of a guy in a wheelchair because I guess he didn't know that he couldn't stand anymore. And that's bad that we also <laughs> pointed out stuff, that he can't stand. Some of this stuff is just like, you got to be shitting me. It's just too much, man. Like, I, I, I don't want to make fun of a guy in the wheelchair, you know, like, but like, if he didn't already know he couldn't stand, then like, that guy's a moron, you know, like, I don't know, man. Sorry, you wheelchair people that are out there mad that you can't stand. And I pointed it out. Um. So it, it's a touchy thing. So we're still trying to figure out what to do. And, you know, uh, he's a good person. And and I think he just didn't say the right things. And he, you know, I don't know. It's a bitch. And so I was like, I'm never doing this again. But if you really bring it back, uh, one, I should have more expectations. I should have been like, hey, just so you know, you can get fired at Wisconsin Dells. Just so you yeah, know, you can get fired by Costa Rica. You yeah, can, yeah you, you, you can get fired anywhere. If you're a shitty human and you did some shitty stuff, I don't want to be by you. Like, to what we were talking about at the beginning, like, I own this company. I get to choose the people I want to be by. If that means at the end of the day, there's none of us here, that's going to suck a lot for me. And that's, I'm ultimately not trying to do that. But, like, man, I don't want to be by people that are making lives harder for anybody, you know? So it's just tricky. Like, just be open with your expectations. And, and I, you know, as a person that likes to throw money at problems, um, you can't do that either. You can't just be like, here's a bunch of stuff. You know, like it, it's children and and uh, employees are the same thing. Uh, they're both incredibly hard to figure out how to reward and motivate and encourage. Um, and it, it feels like the same thing to me because I want the same things for those people. The one thing that my children have is that I truly love them. Otherwise, I don't think like not a lot of employees have a tenure of 18 years anymore, but these kids keep getting to stay in these houses. 
and that's love, you know. So I, I that's a little <laughs> bit off topic. Difference. That's the only difference that's I can. The find. Only difference. They do the so, same stupid shit, though. It, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why probably Emily will be there for eight, eighteen plus years because I love her. You know, that's actually probably why I'll be there for eighteen plus years because yeah. she loves me. But <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> you know, it's it's hard. So like employee retention and all that stuff. Like like it's a weird world we live in right now where where like. When our parents were around, it was like, my dad worked at the steel mill for 42 years, you know? And it's like, now it's like with the gig world and the way information travels, like there's this whole entrepreneur thing where everybody thinks they're an entrepreneur. And and like, I don't even know that I'm an entrepreneur. This is super hard, you know? And uh, Angela is and, not an entrepreneur, so. I think she's an entrepreneur. I am not an entrepreneur. Her I'm just don't. a guy that's trying to figure don't. out how to make this thing go. Like, my kids don't think I am. <laughs> But like, you know what I mean? Like everybody thinks they can be, if I meet one more realtor that thinks they're an entrepreneur because they, they are their own realtor and have no one, I don't think you can be an entrepreneur until you have employees. Like, or I, There should be a different word and that's the word that matters to me. Like everybody can go to work for themselves. Everybody can create their own job. That's not that hard. It's actually a great way to live if that's what you truly just want to do. But when you get in this world where you're supposed to, I have to leave in six minutes. You uh, people do um, that a lot. Self-employed, self-employed yeah. versus like I'm running a business. I think that people yeah. do distinguish that a lot. The difference okay. in a business of self-employed. Then I never want to talk to somebody that talks about being an entrepreneur again. Like, don't use that word with me, people. <laughs> I don't know. You ain't French. Um, you ain't French. <laughs> What's that mean? You know. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just hard. It's and... Just like my kids. So it's just it's just hard to retain the right people and and uh, and and show that love and appreciation. And Dan knows me very well. He can probably indulge in that story because he was there. Um, but like, I just want happiness for everybody. And and sometimes I feel like I'm failing so hard because I just don't here's, know what I'm doing. Before you got to run, um, Ben. Here's my question for you: um, Would you? And maybe this is like in hindsight, but but like next time, let's say, would you not do a because it was like a multi day long distance event? Would you would you do that again with more ground rules? I'm going to give you like a multiple choice here. Would you do that again with more ground rules? Would you do it for maybe a day closer, maybe like one overnight? Would you just keep it for an afternoon or would you just not do it at all? Depends on what my motivation at the time is. I'm still under the belief that I can create a culture of people that are have their own opinions and own wants and needs, but can be in a situation like that with, with a level of maturity that we won't end up in this spot. Um, you know what I mean? So, like, if you look, if you run it back, the one dude that got in a fight shouldn't have been in the company anymore. I was going to say, so really was it, core was values that it was just two two people that were, like, borderline not meeting the core values anyway, and so they're, therefore, that they would have gone anyway. That just That's just where it came out. Yep, yep, and that's kind of where I get at. You know, with the one that's still with us, I do think he can figure it out. Um, he's in a spot where I don't know what he wants for himself. And I don't know that he knows what he wants for himself. And, and I hope he figures it out and I would love to help him do it. But I've, I, I've, I put my hand out there and I, I like without beating it into him, I don't really know what to do, you know? So, um, if you're watching, please let me help you. Um, let me know what you want me to know, but do you do? Yeah. And so it's hard, man. Like it's, it's just the game It's part of the whole thing. And, and, and I, and I gotta go. Get out of here. Uh, My Jai, friends. Fun. Thanks for hanging out. Um, Jai, play us out. Uh, play us out to a little commercial break here. I got to grab uh, one more beer. Somebody drank this one. Um, Angela, when we come back, well, whenever Ben's on, we're, that's going to be like 80% of it. So, Angela, we should got to hear from you. I want to talk uh, about the core values a little bit more and cool ways to do cool stuff with core values. Um, maybe some other like employee retention stuff. Um, feel free to drop your ideas in the chat here while we're on the commercial break. Throw in your employee retention ideas. I'd love to see what you guys got going on. I'm going to grab another beer. Jai's going to play some commercials. We'll see you in a True Fuel 
is a high-octane fuel precision-engineered for your two- and four-cycle equipment. They use the most advanced synthetic lubricants and stabilizers in an ethanol-free fuel, improving performance, protecting your equipment, and saving you time. That means easier startups, smoother idling, and quicker trigger response, plus extended life for all of your equipment. True Fuel is ready to use and easy to store, helping your operations be more efficient and reducing maintenance costs. We at TurfSup use True Fuel because we know it works and we know it's the best option. Check out TrueFuel50.com to learn more. That's T R U F U E L 50.com. You're listening to Turf Sup Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Now you can even ask Alexa to tune you in when you're home. Are outdated spreadsheets and whiteboard scheduling costing you jobs? Or is a lack of consistency between crews causing your bids to differ from job to job? Or worse, delaying critical invoices and payments? Crew Control offers all-in-one business management solutions fit for every trade. From bidding and scheduling to invoicing and integrating payments, Crew Control provides real-time visibility into your crew's efficiency, whether you're in the field, in the office, or even on vacation. Manage your crews more effectively and improve business performance with Crew Control. Start your free trial today at crewcontrol.com. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world, here's to all the women in the green industry. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. This one's a little different. This is good for like coming back from the second break. We'll, We'll mix it up. We'll mix it up. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Home Service Happy Hour right here on Turf Stop Radio. We're talking employee engagement today. Uh, big buck killer Ben Smith was just on hanging out with us for a while from Costa Rica. We got Angela Schroeder in the house. Um, Angela, I think you've said like four words so far the entire show because Ben and I, neither you know, one of us will shut up. It's all good. It's I love, uh, I love hanging out with Ben, so it's it's even more smiles than it's all good. He's so funny. Just like it, he doesn't even have to be saying anything funny, and he's funny. Like he's just fun to interact with. Um, yeah, I know on my show. And it's been a few weeks now, but he has a an unbelievable knack for saying, like, for diagnosing whatever's going on and just saying the exact words to like call it what it is, um, without beating around the bush. And without being like super offensive about it. I don't know how he does it. Um, he doesn't know how he does it. He knows he does it because he he like uh, unapologetically like makes fun of people when he's like, sorry, you don't know how to do this because I don't know how I do it either. Like I can just get away with this and you can't. So, so like, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is, uh, but it cracks me up every time. Um but we're talking, we were talking core values earlier. We ooh, Ryan, Ryan Crowley checking in says, Holy Dan. Um, and uh, thank you. And then he corrected himself. He said, Howdy Dan. Or maybe he meant both. Maybe he meant both and it wasn't a correction. Maybe he meant both. Yeah, I think he meant both. Uh, so thanks. And what's up, Ryan? Um, core values. Angela, what do you think about them? What do you like about them? What do you dislike about them? I, same as you, I think they're like your North star or guiding point, you know, to have of like, um, they're uniquely you, the things that are important to you. They define your company, but they should define your hiring and, um, who you bring on board and then how you make decisions. And, um, I thought of something when he was saying like, you know, ADD entrepreneurs, um, that, one thing is you, you need to create systems around your core values, especially as you grow, I think, of ways to uh, enforce is completely the wrong word, but bring out, celebrate your, that's what I mean, yeah. celebrate your core yeah. values. Instill. Um, yeah, instill those. And you really do need to create systems because as you grow, sometimes you're celebrating them in some people, but it's not obvious to everyone. And so that's what I've learned every time as I grow a business that you have to have systems for 
putting those into place and keeping them in front of your team at all times and celebrating, you know, people that are um, living out the core values. Yeah. Um, if you guys are watching right now, drop in the comments how many employees you have and then drop a note of like, one employee engagement related thing you do if it's a event that you do ben was obviously just talking about an event that he tried that i don't i ben's ben's thing like it was a blast and so it was in super cool and super it had ben written all over it right like this i saw your face angela when he's like and then i gave them this and then i gave them that and then we did this and you're just like the dude just can't help but like he just wants everybody to have the best time of their lives. Yes, and I was he, like, and then the kids got fifty dollars gift cards. And-, kids got, and I have three kids. He gave one to Crosby, my <laughs> my my one year old, which then I got. So I was like, thanks, man. I'm I'm gonna get all these fucking tickets. I'm getting all these tickets on this machine, right? Um, actually, Ben and Ben and I and and our buddy Aaron, like the three of us, were in that arcade late on Saturday night, like having way too much fun. Um, it was a blast. It. It's a bummer that uh, some nonsense came of it for his business because it's like, man, I'm trying to do this super cool thing for you guys. But I, but it is interesting in hindsight where it's like it's really like just co- back to core value related stuff that either you didn't have the right core value and therefore some people were part of the team that maybe shouldn't have been um, or they, you know, they didn't meet the core values. And that was just when you found out. Um, but I think. uh Back to the core values, I, and, and this is part of the employee retention process, but I make it such a part of how we recruit people now. Um, I'm hiring our first uh, external account manager here in our bookkeeping business at Best Damn Bookkeeping. And my first round of interviews is all me presenting to them. And I, I preach that in group interviews all the time. If you haven't heard me talk about that, Sean and I did like a full episode on how to do group interviews. And literally it's me teaching them about our core values. And that's my number one weed out is like, here's our core values. And here's the stories as to why they are what they are. And if you, if these don't resonate with you like tenfold, then that's cool. Just don't come work here. Um, Like you need to opt out right now, because if these aren't your core values too, which is totally fine if they're not, but if these aren't your core values too, you will get fired as a result of them. And that's going to suck for you and it's going to suck for me. So just don't come work here. Like these got to hit home for you. Um, and so we, I use them to filter right from the rip. And then, but, but again, to, to what you were saying earlier, like it's not that we want to enforce the core values. Sometimes we have to, but we want to reward them. Uh, yeah. And so there's a couple things. I want to kick around some ideas here. There's a few things that I have found to ways to do that, to make them just not super boring and corporate um, because nobody wants to like sit in a meeting and be like, Hey, Angela, here's our core values. And I need you to sign this document to confirm that, you know, what our core values are like here there, that doesn't mean they're core to your employees. Um, so a couple things that we've done over the years at our window cleaning business, uh, instead of listing all of our services on our shirts, we listed our core values. And I was just thought that was super cool. Cause like everybody knows everybody that puts the shirt on knows what the hell it is that we do like you're not, if your employee is finding out that day that you do gutter cleaning because it's on your shirt well that's not that's not super good um uh, hopefully they already knew that you did that um but like the reminder every day we, we put it on the back of the shirt so that they you know like because the back of your shirt is what you like look at before you like flip it over um so every day they put their shirt on and they get to like see the core values and remind like why we're doing what we're doing and it's kind of cool for the customers to see too. Like your customers know why they called you. They don't need to see all of your services, but when they see what you believe in, like that, that builds a customer for life. Right. Absolutely. And, and the, the employees are way more likely to behave in accordance with their core values when it says, here's how I behave. Right. It's like the truck drivers that have the sign on the back that says, how's my driving? It's like, give me a call, right? Call me out if I'm not doing these things. Um, and so I, that that was always just super cool for us. I know Andy still does that in the the window cleaning business. Um, I got one other thing, Angela. Before I before I talk us away here, what do you got? So we and I just wrote down we need to get back into this. Things happen, and then you're like, why don't we do that anymore? But um, we had nominations um, for when you see 
a team member exemplifying the core values. And so there was just a nomination form. And then we would celebrate all the nominations, but then every Friday do a gift card drawing. You got entered for nominating someone. So we wanted to celebrate that you were nominating. Um, so uh, gift cards for people that nominated and then gift cards for people that were nominated. Awesome. So um, it just it just brought it out to attention because we're always mentioning it. Like it's just a way to mention it. Like, oh, gift cards. We're giving away free stuff for people who are awesome. And it's a way to say each of them again and then how you see them in action. Yeah. Yeah, I think implanting them in something that's fun and has positive vibes yeah. is the mechanism to carry them forward. It can't be, hey, just a reminder, here's what our core values are. And hey, uh, can you sign this document that says you agree with these and you, uh, you're you going to abide by them? Like nobody wants to be managed like that, right? Um, at Blue Sky is one of my favorite things that we did. And we did it way too late. Um, we had core values and, and this was only something that was probably part of like the last year of things we did there. But the, the minute I get, uh, we're, we're getting there at best damn bookkeeping where we're like getting that size of team. Um, but I'm, a to I'm totally going to do this at best damn bookkeeping. It was like my favorite thing that we started doing at blue skies. We had our core value awards and, um, I don't even know if we called them that maybe we did, but now that I say that we need a, we need a stupid ass word. That's funny for it. Um, so I'm gonna figure out a good, good word. You That's had funny. funny prizes for them. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So, so at blue skies, our core values were plow, positive attitude, loyalty, ownership, and accountability. And we serve not a whole lot different than best that I have now. It's very similar. Like the core values are mine. And so it's just different letters with different words, but it all kind of means the same thing. Um, but, uh, we had for positive attitude, we had the Richard Simmons award. And if you don't remember who Richard Simmons was, he was that goofy, curly haired nut, like little tiny guy doing workout videos with a headband on. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And so, and so like the, the sticker was like, if you got that award, <clears throat> you got a sticker with his face on it, like with red and white blow up going. And, and then you would get a gift card uh, for, and, and, it, and you'd get that award for like a specific instance where like it was recognized that you did this thing and you like, for whatever reason, had a great positive attitude over that last month. So every month we would give these awards for every single um, pot, uh, mm. core value that we had. And so it was super fun for the team. We had a monthly meeting with the team. It was like a way to get everybody together, recognize everybody, you know, uh, have some fun, and also talk about the core values every single month um, in a way that's not like, hey, can somebody tell me what our core values are? Um, and so again, the minute I have like a, a big enough pool to, to play with here in, in the new business, like that's like the first thing I'm going to do. It was just so much fun. Um, and then uh, one of the other things that we would do, we didn't have it like well enough documented this time. I'm going to document it really well. We gave away prizes that couldn't even feasibly have been won. Um, yes. yeah, There's like it was like, Hey, you got the Richard Simmons award. Here's your sticker. Here's a gift card. And you get the company parking spot for the next month, but we're a remote bookkeeping company. So there's like, this is just like, it's an award that you can't use. And there's no, it's not a thing. Or you get the corner office or you get to work from home all week, or you get to work in your pajamas. It's like all things that you already can do. Um, but now it's, now it's part of the award. <clears throat> so it feels cool. Uh, and that was always just super funny to, to, give people stuff that they either already had or like just wasn't a realistic thing. Yeah. Um, Cause that was part of the fun of it just to be stupid. It is part it. Of the fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, <clears throat> we're out of time today, uh, which is super normal whenever you have, have been on the show. Yeah. Like that's just to be expected. Um, next week. I don't think we're going to have a show. Cause I think I'm still on an airplane. No, I probably am like just getting down to see you, but next week, I'm gonna see you, Angela. I'm gonna yes, be uh, here. Uh, with you. And I forget. I feel like you told me when you were landing. I don't and know I anymore because this is like the one Wilmington. Wilmington is so weird to get to. Like I know I fly out at nine fifteen in the AM, but who knows what time I get there? I got to go to New York first. I think I get there. At yeah, like the only place. Yeah, uh, 
that's what I think we're just missing the show because we are going to have like podcast row. Um, if we can fix the roadcaster, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll do a, maybe I'll do a radio show on a different day. I'll just have to talk to Darren and, and heck you just see what we can do. So yeah. Maybe a different day or different time, or you could still do the late night one. Um, right. We could after do a the late night show. version. We could do a late night version and throw it on turfs up. Cause I don't have a guest lined up next week. Cause every time I'm like traveling, it's weird to try to line up a guest. Cause you just never really yeah. quite know what's going to be going on. And, and it's easier to just be like, Hey, Jai, just do a two-part episode. I have plenty of episodes that are two hours long. I'll just do a two-parter. Um, Tre Trevor said this, and I, this podcast is the first time. Row. We mean podcast row, and we mean there is a single podcast station. I said podcast row like it's, you know, like it's. Does it need to be yeah. more than one to be a row? Can't yeah, you just have a row of one? Row, podcast. But uh, bring some signage, Trevor, and yeah, record an episode there. So there'll be a big table. Um, and. Uh, hopefully the roadcaster hey, with like four microphones. So we Trevor, can... Trevor, um, how about we do an episode um, where you're on my show and I'm on your show at the same time. And we just act really confused the whole time. Like I'm trying to ask you questions and then you're trying to ask me questions, but we're like, we're, we're like trying to battle. <clears throat> we're trying to battle for show host, um, but super awkward. You get you down. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Like a, not like a host off because a host off would be like intentional and then it'd be more competitive. I'm talking like a host confusion episode, <laughs> like who's really hosting this thing. Um, yeah. 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 Like, so we should see how many show like live different shows we might be able to fit in, but it'll be tucked off in a corner and we, the actual roadcaster, like, uh, set up board box. died. We only used it once and then we traveled with it to home service workshop and the box is dead. Really? So have, it, it just won't. They don't, they don't warranty it or anything? Again, I don't know. We're dealing with that. So I think we just need to order a new one for, so we have it for next week, but then we have all the headphones and microphones and. All the yeah, things. I'm in. Trevor can bring one. Trevor's got one he can bring. I got a tiny, I just got this little thing. I'm probably going to screw this up when I do it. I got this, this little H6. That's my unit. That's my little, that's the, that does all the magic. So I had nothing when it was just my show. And then we did that for ours and JC wanted the real pastor. Cause if you just plug in one mic, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. This one you can plug four into. Um, although I got to plug one. Guys like get the hell off the radio. Goodbye. Yeah. You guys are over. You guys are over. This, that's the cane pulling you off the stage. But I'm glad you did it. Like, I need that. My wife has to do that to me a lot of times. She's like, damn, like, you got to get off of that call. You got to go get the kids. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out, Angela. Appreciate the hell out of you. Business nerds, you guys know what to do. Work smarter and harder. Go earn some pride. I got a guy on tonight. Uh, Josh, I forget his last name. We're talking health insurance stuff, and we're going to make it not super boring. Um, got some cool stuff that he's uh, kind of breaking the health insurance model with for small business owners. So if health insurance in your business sucks or your health insurance sucks, maybe tune in. And uh, it's still insurance stuff. It's going to be super boring. It's not, insurance stuff is always super boring. It's almost as bad as bookkeeping. Um, so grab a couple beers, and uh, we'll see you tonight. Peace. We'll